David Norman from Discover Battery here, and I'm at the Sparkbox Park in beautiful downtown Phoenix, uh, Super Bowl weekend. I'm here with Brian Stark from Steel & Spark. He uh, uh, owns and operates the manufacturing company that assembles the homes you see in front of us here. This was an opportunity given the exposure with Super Bowl to really show what a sustainable housing uh, product looks like. And so I like to call it the box sustainability. The product is called the Spark Box. Um, our company is Steel and Spark. The idea is that this is something that can drop in your backyard, that can help with housing that's quick to market. They're completely off grid with lithium batteries and solar panels. Um, we're going to do a tour of those and do the walk around through those specific things, but maybe on the two platforms, what's the distinguishing difference and what do you see as the use cases for those individual models? The, the Sparkbox one or the SB1, what we're calling it, is was really an uh, evolution out of COVID where right. people were working from home and they needed an office in the backyard trying to get have some, some place to get away from the kids. Uh, and so that was really just a studio. Uh, it, ha it has a, a 10 kilowatt hour battery system. It's a standard container. Yep. It's, it's eight foot by 20 foot. Uh, and so it can go into most backyards. And so that was kind of the idea. But the feedback we got was, hey, I need a bathroom in this thing. Mm. And so the next evolution of that was, okay, how do we do a bedroom off grid that's not connected to utilities? And how do we, one, get that, how do we develop that product? But there's a lot of information out there about lithium and a lot of people see stuff on TikTok and Twitter and, and, and it's misinformation yeah. is a problem that we're all dealing with. Yeah. And so I think that's, that's really been the challenge. And so that's why it's really important for us to find a solution on the energy side, yeah. right? And that's why I really like with Discover, everyone we talked to during that research is who was actually living off grid or in the industry is hands down Discover Battery, Discover Battery. So this is the bigger bathroom model and the accessible unit. And as you can see, the door is wider. You could actually be in a chair if you needed right. to accommodate some uh, uh, disabilities there. There's a full-size shower in this. It doesn't feel a cramped. It doesn't feel at all like you're right. in a you know, prefab container home. Right. Yeah. I think one of the things we've done here is where the glass goes up past the ceiling. That makes it feel like a much taller space. Mm -hmm. and, and this space is, is seven feet. It's it's low. It's a foot lower than what the bedroom is. Yeah. Right? So by doing things like that, I think we've increased what it feels like, and it's bright. But we've elected to go with a, a toilet called Cinderella, which is out of Norway, and it is an incinerating toilet. And so every 100 flushes, you pull out the ashtray, which could be used in the garden, or you throw it away. It's completely mm -hmm. benign. Benign. And, yeah. So there's no water. The only difference is you have a liner that goes in before you use it. Other than that, it's pretty amazing and it saves 2,000 gallons of water per person per year. Yeah, I mean, I mean, something like this is going to be pulling, let's say, two or 3,000 watts in doing that action, right? Right. Um, most tiny homes, RVs and things, that would that's a big, big load sure. for a long time. That's generator turn on sort of a, a, right. a load. In this particular uh, building, well, wait, what do we have for solar on the roof? So we, we have 30 panels that are 410 watts each, so okay. close to 12,000 12, watts. watts plus, yeah. um, and then the battery bank, currently we have 25 kilowatt hour system, um, but I think we can add another one to get to 30. 30 quite easily, yeah. I mean, that's still a lot of power for something this small, but yeah. especially when you have efficient things like the lights integrated, uh, you know, right. all LEDs and low, low consumption devices. I would say that's probably your biggest load, frankly speaking. Yes. Um, excellent, let's go out and have a look at some of the mechanical room stuff the, for, the, for the nerds in the audience. So what we have here to support the solar that's on the roof, uh, there's 12,000 watts of solar roughly on the roof there. And so you can see these Schneider Lex, uh, Electric Connects NPPT 100s. Uh, each one of these is about a five kilowatt machine. So, you know, paired up with the 12 kilowatt hours of solar one, that's why you need the three charge controllers. Uh, these integrate, uh, and I think the rooftop array is 600 volts. So these integrate directly into the uh, bus bar in this combiner box. This is your main piece of power electronics and the engine of the system. This is what's driving and powering all of the electrical loads in the suite itself. It's drawing its power and all the solar from this system on the DC bus is coming in to this lithium battery bank. This is, a, this is the Discover battery uh, element platform. Each one of these is a 3U uh, 100 amp hour, five kilowatt hour uh, building block that are paralleled down and combined in this combiner box uh, with the appropriate breakers and things. You can see that these are electrically tied into one another through the combiner box and then they're all communicating with one another 
uh, over a CAN bus network that's uh, you know proprietary to Discover. It essentially is going out from there to speak uh, and convert it to speak through through to the Schneider Electric device, uh, so that this knows what this is doing. These know what that's doing, and these can tell these how to charge it off the phone. So that's a closed loop integration network system uh, for allows for full sort of you know remote uh, accessibility, programmability, and uh, monitoring of the system from you know any place that you've got phone access or internet access. You can see the status of the home. This particular bank here is five times five, so that's 25 kilowatt hours of energy storage here. Uh, it's all lithium ferrophosphate batteries, which are cobalt free, which basically means they're much more thermally stable. They're also able to be take, you know, very hard energy draws both in, you can charge these at 1C continuously. So this can be charged at a rate of 25 kilowatts continuously, um, or it can be, you know, pulled out of the batteries and extracted. And that's really important, especially for like a transformer based inverter that's strength is powering in large loads. Uh, again, you know, motor loads, inductive loads and things like this. These batteries are able to respond to that because they have a 3C surge rating. Uh, 3C on a battery bank this size would be, you know, in, a, in an instantaneous or sub 10 second basis. This could, you could pull 75 kilowatts out of these batteries. Uh, in the amps, speaking of that in amps, you're talking about 500 amps of DC at a 53 volt range. Yeah, this is our tank room. The four tanks in the back uh, add up to about 1,250 gallons of fresh water. And that can be filled with a garden hose. There's a insert, which I can show you on the side, um, that you click in and it, and it fills. It takes about three hours. Uh, this in front is our gray water tank. And so this has 330 gallons of gray water storage. The, the sinks, both sinks and the shower come through here. They come through a, a micron filter that filters out any type of soap or, or debris. There's also a, a grease interceptor that takes out any type of oils okay. before it goes into the gray water tank. Basically on the supply side, we have, uh, everything is pumped. We have an expansion tank here, which is what saves your pump turning on constantly. And so that, that holds the pressure. It, and before it goes into our water heater, it goes through a UV filter. Uh, and then another 50 to 5 micron filter, and then straight into our, our water heater. What would, uh, you know, what are you looking at? Let's say, let's say I was looking at that and putting a place in for my father to right. sort of age in. What am I looking at for a spend on something like this? 260,000. 260,000 US. US dollars, okay. Um, and now infrastructure for this, same sort of thing. Are you putting this on piers typically? Yeah, so this this will come in with diamond piers the day before. Okay. Um, and, and that's a very simple process where we would just show up and install them. They're pre-cast footings. Uh, and then the next day we just drop two of these two boxes onto the piers. Price is the same okay. between the finish. Um, the cabinetry, there's different color selections, but from a pricing standpoint, everything is the same. Okay. The other thing I would point out here is all, all the air comes out of these, which are called sejos, and they're completely directional. So these can, these can move, you can close them off wherever you need to point the air. And then all of your return air is going up through this grill above the kitchenette. Right, of so, course. So the, course. the level of detail and effort that we put into hiding those things where you don't have kind of the ugly return grills, uh, in your face is, is really important for us. Okay, Brian, we're in the last of the studios. We've done the full circuit now for the right. uh, display installation. Uh, this is obviously another, you know, a little more of a man cave than office, uh, so to speak, in terms of the design and, uh, and the finishing and things. This would be similar in footprint to the office we saw first. Right, 160 square feet. 160 square feet, again, a 20, 20 foot container, standard right. 20 foot shipping container. Exactly. Right, uh, you know, lots of light, lots of space. Again, you can sort of see you know, the tall ceilings. It's not messing any space. You're not cramped in a box. It right. doesn't, feel, doesn't feel cramped at all. This is a uh, pretty amazing, great work. And uh, thanks very much. Hey, yeah, I want to thank you. I mean, it's been a wonderful week here. Absolutely. Thanks for all the uh, assistance. And thanks for, you know, again, answering questions. I just found it fascinating talking to a designer architect. Yeah, I no, appreciate it. How it works.